in this season is in the Lord doing things for me, to me, through me, to benefit everything that I'm accountable for and everything that I'm responsible for. And I'm going to go out of this, se this season saying, God, I know I heard you and I believed you and I dreamed it and I hoped in it and because of it, it was a blessing to me. When God speaks faith into our life, he has a, the Bible says that he has a hope in you. He's got a hope in you that when he speaks it to you, that you are going to let it be developed into something that you actually realize, God, this is all about your goodness in my life. You have unbelievable expectation and, and dreams of the birthing that God has given you in the natural. Can I tell you, that is hope in the supernatural. That's what hope looks like in the supernatural. I am the healer. I am the provider. I am the miracle worker. It's going to come through him, but it's not going to come if you are not expecting it. If you are not dreaming about it. If you are not hoping for it. I'm going to tell you, church, this is the season for us to put all of it behind us. Put it under the blood and just to realize our hope's going to arise. Welcome to Victory. I want to thank you for being a part of our Victory family today. Thank you for watching the program. I'm the senior pastor at Victory in Camden and Victory in El Dorado. We have campus pastors at each one of those. And we just want to thank you for being a part of our audience. Thank you for letting Victory be a part of your family and a part of your life. During the service today, there will be a telephone number at the bottom of your screen. If you would take advantage of that. Let us know what's going on in your life. If God is dealing with your heart, if you're rejoicing in your heart, things that we can stand with you and pray with you about, call that number at the bottom of the screen. Let's go right into that service at Victory now. It's gonna see new things. It's gonna hear new things. It's gonna believe new things. And these new things are personally invested for you. You can have hope and not have a thought process that God is good to me. You can have hope a stand on the word, and this is where I see Jesus. He would walk around all of, all of Jerusalem, and he would encounter people that if you looked at them in the natural, they would just have these stands of faith. They knew the Messiah was coming. They knew all these things, and everybody around them was saying, well, that's faith. Look at their faith. But see, Jesus had to go all the way to a little well in an out-beaten path to find hope to find hope. And he had to sit down with a little lady that everyone had looked over. And do you know what came out of her mouth? More hope than Jesus was encountering in all of Jerusalem. That's why he had to go. I'm going to tell you, Jesus is drawn to hope. Because here's what she said. She said, when the Messiah comes, he will tell me things I don't know. Can I tell you, that's hope. That's hope. Because when the timing of God comes, he's going to tell me the things that I don't know. That's hope. Because what you understand is God knows everything. And he is committed to this process in your life. And he is working this season out for your good. But if the enemy can get us to remove our hope in the Lord, when we stand, we don't stand for God doing it to us. We stand for God doing it. We stand for God doing it. But we take out the us. That's why hope deferred will make you sick. That's why you can, and I'm going to tell you, I walk with a lot of church people, and I hear a lot of church people talk about all the things that are godly. And I have talked about all the things that I think is God's doing. But if you really begin to talk to some of us in our darkest hour, <laughs> in our midnight hour, you'll quickly see why it might be being delayed. It's because our hope hasn't risen. It's because our hope has not risen to the level of what God is wanting to birth in this season. Our hope has got to arise. Hope this year is an important part of the walk into the suddenlies. It's because God is committed to his word being made known. He is. But God is more committed, can I be honest with you, to be, being made known in you. You are the journey for him. You are the journey for him. You are the reason. You are the reason that he sent what he loved most so that you could walk into what God wants to do through you. Now stop and think about that. Stop and think about that. You are so important to God that he would abandon all of it for you 
to succeed. For you to overcome. For you to be victorious, for you to be healed, for you to be able to be aware of who you really are. You are the son and daughter of God. It was worth that to him. So when the enemy comes and he is robbing our hope, he's doing it intentionally because he's not taking away God's power. He can't do that. He's taking away what God loves. And I'm going to tell you that our life is built on the love of God. Everything about my life, can I tell you, is only built on the love of God. Nothing I have I deserve. Nothing I am I should ever get. I should have nothing, be nothing. If you knew my story, you would agree with me. But God's love trumped it all. All of it. All of it. So I'm going to tell you, if I can't be so inspired to believe that in my season of the miraculous, well, I'm not doing God any justice. Because God is telling us, I am desiring for my sons and daughters to arise, to reveal to this world what it means to be mine, to reveal to this earth the goodness of God in this season. We know it's going to get dark. How many of you experienced it? But can I tell you, the promise of the Father is it's going to get better for you. It's going to get better for you. If you trust in the hope of the calling of God on your life, it's going to get powerful for you. If you trust in the anointing of what God has called you to do, it's going to get miraculous for you. We have got to stop dis, uh, uh, stop separating who God is and who we are. God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. God is tired, I believe. I, I'm not even going to say that because that's wrong to say. But I believe that God is longing for his sons and daughters to be revealed in our own hearts. In our own hearts. In what God has been telling us all along. The enemy came last year, I believe, for that one purpose. I believe, I'm going to say in my life, I know he did. I know he had, no, he, had, he had no thought that he was going to win. There's no way. I looked at him in the face and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed, laughed and laughed and laughed, and laughed that he thought that he could beat God. But he wasn't after God. He was after me. He was after the hope that I was standing on and believing that, God, you love me enough that you walked me into this place and that you're causing this place to be fruitful to be victorious, to be mighty, to be abundant, to be all the things that you want for your children. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to just say, Father, I'm sorry. You are too good to me. For when situation and circumstances arise, for it to rob my understanding of your love, of your commitment, of your heart, or of your dreams, of your desire for me, for my family, for, my, for, for what your calling is on my life, for what you want to do in this season. And Lord, I take this hand and I lift it up in hope, making a statement to the enemy my hope is risen. My hope comes from the Lord. He is the maker of heaven. And he is the maker of earth. He is the beginning of this. And he is the end of this. And I'm stuck like glue to him. And because where he walks is victorious, my life is victorious because I'm his daughter and I'm his son. And this season, I have a hope that my father is going to reveal this to you. Tell the enemy that. Say, I have hope and faith that my father is going to reveal this to you. 
So get ready for the suddenly. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You, Lord, we reclaim back our hope of the calling of God's on our life. Lord, we reclaim back the hope of the miracles that you have tried to pour into our hearts to be birthed. We claim back health and healing, healing and healing and restoration in our families. We claim back the generation of the godly getting better and better. We claim it back in our hope in the Lord in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. It's yours. It's yours. I'm going to tell you what God has been saying all along has been for you. It is a choice not to give it up. So I've been asking God in this season. I've been saying, God, where did I lose it? Where did I lose it? God began to show me, I mean, certain situations and certain words and certain times. And he began to say, you know what? He said, you've allowed things to be put on your wall that I never intended to be there. Can I tell you, we all have walls. You know that. We all have things that are before our face. They might not be seen, but I'm going to tell you, they can be heard, they can be felt, they can be believed, they can be agreed with. The Bible says two cannot walk together if they don't agree. If God does not agree with what you have allowed, and you say, well, you know what, I just, I didn't say it over myself, it was spoken over me. Can I tell you, you are accountable for your wall. You're accountable for your wall. You're accountable for what you see. Can I tell you that, that this is something that I've, I've heard Gateway say in the last little bit. It said, look around and what you see and hear will be your future. That's so resonated in my heart. Can I tell you what you see and what you hear will be your future. So what's on you, this is where we find Hezekiah. And it was such an important time in his life because God had done great things. God had really miraculously done great reformation, had done wonderful things, and there became an attack. And in the attack, do you know what the enemy started doing? He started talking in their own language. The enemy started talking in their own language. God's word brings you peace. The Bible says in Psalms 55 that God has redeemed your soul in peace from the battle that was against you. What that means is God has already paid the price for that battle. Look ahead to something else. Look ahead to something else. If you forfeit your peace for fear, you've made that trade. God already made the trade in the beginning. God already traded your fear for peace. He said it. And he did it. But if you trade the peace that God has already redeemed your life in for fear or control or pride or torment or manipulation, if you learn to maneuver that way, you've given back to God and you've taken what the enemy is giving you. This has been a big learning curve for me this year. In the last month, I'm telling you, giant. I walk all the time and I say, God has redeemed my soul in peace from that. Really, Crystal? Really? Because you know what you really think. No, I don't. I'm going to tell you, no, I don't. And no, you don't. You know what I think? I think what I've allowed God to put on my wall. And the way you combat the lies of the enemy is you just refuse it to be in your sight. You refuse it to be in your hearing. You refuse it to be the battle that's against you. It doesn't have to be your battle because God has already redeemed you from that battle. God has already redeemed you, and he didn't just redeem you without anything. He said, I've redeemed you in peace, in peace. So if you want to have a, a, a good gauge, am I really hoping in the creative power of the Lord? Do you have peace? Because the enemy is going to do everything he can to rob your peace. He's going to send every person and situation and thing to rob it. But you've got to stand guard. You've got to be a guard over your heart. You've got to be a guard over your future. You've got to be a guard over your destiny. You've got to be a guard over your wall. You've got to say to yourself, it will not go on my wall. It will not. Here's what I know. I know that the enemy will never stop sending words and attacks and spirits and thoughts, he will not. And in, in the, in, if you look at that in the natural, this is where I have been this year, just in the last month. Oh my God, that's hopeless. 
How many of you think about that in the natural? Then the enemy's not ever going to stop. And that makes us be hopeless. So it's not that we aren't standing in faith. It's that the enemy is always here and always repetition. So it gets you into this place where you're standing in faith, but you have no hope that it's ever going to get better. Can I tell you is you can look up into heaven and you can make a decision. My soul has been redeemed from these battles through peace. They will not be my destiny. You refuse to walk hand in hand with those spirits any longer. You just make a decision. In Amos 3.3, it says, how can two walk together if they don't agree? How can two walk together if they don't agree? You've got to make a decision this year. I'm going to agree with God, and I'm not going to agree with rejection. I'm going to agree with God, and I'm not going to agree with fear. I'm going to agree with God, and I'm not going to agree with poverty. I'm going to agree with God, and I'm not going to agree with sickness. You've got to make it because you're not walking with God if you are not in agreement with Him. You're not. It's on your wall. It's in front of your face. And you're standing saying, God, I'm trying in everything in me to believe. God is saying, wipe it off your wall. Come into the agreement what I have already bought for your life. So I want everybody to close your eyes again. Because I believe without a shadow of a doubt that there is miraculous hope being placed in our hearts today. And I want you to ask God. I want you to say, Father... Wipe my wall clean of everything that is not your purpose, your plan, your future, your heart, your dreams, your thoughts, your work, your power, your miracles, your life. Wipe it clean of everything else but that. Father, I thank you that the blood has the power to do that. So, Lord, I apply the blood over my mind and over my memory and over my heart and over my past and over my, 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 my responses. I even apply the blood over my self-righteousness. How many of you can attest to that? I apply the blood over my self-righteousness. And I make a declaration out of my mouth that my wall will be guarded with every thought and word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that you are a healer. And Father, I know a lot of the words that have been placed on our heart has came out of hurt. And Lord, it's hard to imagine It's hard to imagine us having the redemptive power to walk out of hurtful things when we know they're going to come again. I'm going to tell you, hope is arising in this season. Hope is arising in this season. I'm leaving you with this scripture. Isaiah 48.3 says, I have declared former things from the beginning. They went out from my mouth and I caused you to hear them. Suddenly, I did them and they came to pass for you. Can you believe it? My hope is in the Lord. Our hope is in the Lord. He is a good father and he is doing good things. I got into a relationship with a guy at a young age, and first boyfriend thought he was the world, you know, the little I love you's and you're so sweet and all this kind of stuff, and as soon as I married him, it turned in to be a nightmare. He started first pushing, hit me. Um, it went to choking throwing me out of cars. We had kids, and it started with the kids. He would go from anything, slapping my son up across the head because he couldn't get a PlayStation game right, or um, he threw the kids up, he would just throw them out of bed, throw them up against dressers, and they screaming and hollering, and if I tried to get into it, you know what, we would start, and it come to a point to when my kids got older, 
that I would actually take the beatings just so they couldn't hear. I remember times that he would get drunk and I would try to sneak out of the house. I would sneak my kids out. He would catch me and he would beat me. And if the kids would cry, he would beat them. And then I got scared that if I told that I would get my kids taken away. And it's many a days that I would go out with a smile when I want to just tell somebody, hey, I need rescuing. And I come to a point to where, okay, God, I'm just that tired. So I know I'm not this bad of a person to live this way. And it's like when I started talking to God and he was telling me, Felicia, but you still not letting go. I want to deliver you softly, wholeheartedly, and all the way, not just part of the way. I put on some gospel music one morning, the last morning of it all, and he got mad, he jumped up off the couch, and I could feel that, okay, this is gonna be it. I mean, this is the climax of this relationship. It's gonna be live or die. I went to the police station. They claimed they couldn't do anything. I went back, and he was ready for me. Police said, I couldn't make him leave, and that's it. They made him leave, they dropped him off on the road, he come back. And he came back through the back door. He forced me and the kids in the car. Uh, he took me down to this wooded area where nobody could see us or hear us, some place that I found out he had prepared to kill me anyway. Uh, it was a clear spot with a tree and he had a belt. He was going to put me up here and hang me. He locked the kids up in the car and they were screaming and, and he wouldn't let me do anything. And I just begged him and pleaded him. And there was when I realized, okay, Felicia, this is it. Or either you let God take over and you quit trying to do this thing yourself. I wrestled with him. He got more fierce. He turned me around. He choked me till I passed out. When I woke up, I was face down. I had leaves now, had been swallowing and eating leaves, and he was leaning there towards me, and he said, you're not gone yet. And he said, I'm going to give you one last time to say a prayer before I kill you. And I told him, you don't have to because God, he's already done it. He just dropped me. And he took us out of the woods. You could see God working. He couldn't go through with it. I went to the ER and I could see myself in a casket, my kids going around. And on the way, the ambulance people, they were like, we have no pulse. We have nothing, not even a blood pressure. I felt my feet getting cold. I felt all this and I had prepared to die. And I thought that that would just change it all. My, somebody would take my kids and, you know, and God, I'm just in the way. And on the way, I laid back and it's like he just had a conversation with me how great he was inside of me and who I was in him and who should I be afraid of? Who should I be scared of? Since everything has happened, God has me and the kids up and he has given me a husband that loves me, that supports me, somebody I can talk to, to have my kids and my husband sitting in church by me. Praising God is just unexplainable. Jesus didn't come here for us to deserve a bad life. He gave his life for us to be happy. He gave his life for us to live the way he wants to live and that's with joy and happiness and peace. And I have peace. And you can have peace.
To hear more victory testimonies of lives changed, healed, and restored, log on to www.thevictorychurch.com slash my story. I believe the Holy Spirit has touched our life today. I believe that the words that were spoken, I believe God is dealing with us. And for many of us, maybe we need to make some things right with God. Maybe there's some areas of our life that we need to surrender to Him. Maybe there's some things that the Holy Spirit is asking us to come over or come out of. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you and ask God to forgive us? Can I pray with you and ask God to help us to surrender those areas of our life? Can I pray with you and ask God to help us to be able to change things through His power, to be able to live differently, talk differently, think differently, and be different? God can help us do that. That's all in the areas of God's strength and His power is to help us live a victorious life. Let's pray. Would you pray and say, Father, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my failure. And Lord, I ask you to come in my life. And Lord, right here today, I ask you, God, that you would be Lord of my life. And Lord, in the issues of my life that I need to surrender to you, the areas of fear and discouragement, the things that's caused me to be depressed and those things that's hit hard on me or those things that's tried to come into my life and overcome my life, Lord, I come today to surrender them to you. I know that you're able, God, to free me, to help me. And Lord, I surrender them in Jesus' name to you. And now, Lord, I ask you for your grace and for your strength to overcome. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Call that number on the bottom of the screen. Will you call us and let us hear from you? Will you let us be a part of your support team? Let us be a part of that team that's going to be praying with you and standing with you and believing God with you. And also on the website, let us hear of your prayer request. God bless you. And I pray that this week will be the strongest week in the Lord you've ever had. Look forward to it next week. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abel. Thanks for watching Victory today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you and thank you for watching the program today.